I remember as a kid seeing loads of yo-yo quilts and things like vests, even fancy jackets. I mean, all kinds of stuff. I'm talking toys and even Christmas garland, all made from these little fabric circles. And I thought, hey, hmm, why don't I make some quilting yo-yos with my knitting loom? Hey, it's Denise from Lumihad.com. And I wanna show you how to use your scrap yarn and your 24 peg loom to make loads of these really cool, really usable small circles. And if you stay with me till the end, I'll show you how to make these versions. They're more of a hexagon with their flat size and they work really cool as well. All right, let's talk supplies. You're gonna need a 24 peg loom, eight yards of worsted weight yarn, scissors, needle, and an optional one stitch marker just to put on the first peg. I'm gonna take a single strand of worsted weight yarn and secure it to my anchor peg using a simple knot. You can use a slip knot if you're more comfortable. And then take that strand of yarn and put it between the first and last peg. And the direction you go doesn't matter. Put it behind one, in front of two, behind three, in front of four. And you're gonna draw string cast on by doing that zigzag motion through all of your pegs. So every other one in front the other one in the back and once you're back at peg one right here you can see it it's marked you're going to take that working yarn behind peg one right here bring it forward and put it in front of peg two and the next few pegs just lay it loosely over a few of them hold on to it with your fingers in the back of the loom and then take your hook and take the bottom loop over the top on peg two then on four then on six, and you're gonna continue around the loom, taking the bottom loop over the top on all of the pegs that have two loops while you hold on to your string. You can see that right here. All right, and you'll notice that that is every other peg where you're taking that bottom loop over the top. So you're gonna continue to go around your loom until you get back until you're here at peg 24, right here, you're going to knit off that peg, that's, that's one, and the one next to it is 24, so I'm gonna knit it off, and that is the end of my cast on, right? I'm done casting on, the drawstring cast on, and now I'm ready for row one. So only on row one and only on peg one, you're gonna skip it, slip it, because Peg one does not have a loop. So take the working yarn, put it over pegs one and two and knit off peg two. And now you're gonna continue knitting off the next 23 pegs. You'll notice that I'm using the U-wrap version of the knit stitch. To do this, what you're gonna do is take that working yarn and half wrap the peg and take the bottom loop over the top. So continue using this U-wrap version, or you can use the uh, true or the flat. All of them work almost, almost interchangeably. To do the E-wrap, you're gonna have to knit with two strands of yarn, and that's gonna change the size of your yo-yos, which in general, conventional way is that these little circles are about two and a half inches or two and a quarter inches in diameter. If you do an E-wrap and you use two strands as one, you'll get a much larger um, circle and it'll look a bit different. All right, so once you're finished knitting all the remaining pegs, you're done with that row one and now you're ready to go to row two and this time you'll see that peg one which I've marked uh, with the optional stitch marker does have a loop and so this time you're just going to knit all of them. So for rows two through ten you're going to knit all 24 pegs. So you're just going to keep knitting. You need ten rows in total in order to finish knitting your yo-yo. 
By the way, once you have a few rows done, don't forget to take the knot off the anchor peg. You don't want to leave it there as you continue to knit. And then keep knitting. As I said, you're going to need 10 rows in total to finish your yo-yo. So once you've done that, then uh, you're ready for the cast off. And so we're going to do a drawstring cast off of those 24 pegs. Now I'm going to do something a little different. Normally you take the working yarn around the loom, a whole circle and then a few more, but we're not going to do that. We're going to do things a little different. I'll do this one on the next one, the next yo-yo. Uh, we're going to only take the working yarn around half of the loom and right here you can see i'm at basically peg tw uh, 12 and then i'm going to take my scissors and cut the working yarn i wanted to show you if you were left with a little bit of yarn or you just don't want to use that much you could just go uh, like i said halfway through the circle then from the top scoop up and uh, feed it through and then take it off immediately take the loop off. So again, from the top, scoop up, feed it through, and then take the loop off the peg. So you see that I've taken two off. Two of them are cast off already. And then just keep doing that to all 24 pegs. But you gotta make sure that you put that uh, working yarn through each loop before you take the loop off of the peg. And as you can see, I'm continuing to go I'm using less yarn than normal. Uh, if you leave the loop on, then you really do need a really long uh, strand of yarn. But in this case, I'm pulling as I uh, remove the loop, I'm pulling on it. And that's what's making it be long enough for me to use just that little bit of yarn for all of my 24 loops. Then just finish taking them all off and you're done. Now what we have to do is stretch those stitches. So uh, hold on to the top and the bottom and just basically pull on them. That's what it means to stretch them. And then pull on the drawstring to close the hole. And I use this pencil to keep me from closing all the way. You don't have to do this, but the original ones, the, the cloth ones, do have a little circle on them and I want to stay as consistent as possible. And so that's why I use this pencil. Then I'm going to go to the other side of it and do the same thing. I'm pulling on the drawstring to somewhat close the little hole. And then I want to be consistent. So I pull on the drawstring and again, just like I did on the other side, I'm going to go ahead and, and get my pencil. I use plastic pencils. Um, whatever pencil, whatever you have that is like this, a chopstick, whatever. Um, and it makes sure that all of your little holes are the same size. And then just to secure these, uh, first of all, you could see how I used a lot less um, yarn by casting off the way I did. Then just take a needle and thread that needle. And then you're going to take the drawstring and you're going to, in a circle, um, feed the yarn through those uh, cast on and cast off loops and that's just going to secure your work so that it doesn't um, get undone or or get big or just um, not look like it should and then just take that working yarn feed it through and take it to the end because this is how you're going to connect one circle to the other you're going to do the same on both sides now you may not need uh both of these strands of yarn, right? Uh, in order to sew both sides because all of your circles are gonna have two of them the same way. So here I am on the other side and I'm feeding it through um, all of those loops. And then again, I feed it to the end so that I can use it to connect them. So all you have to do is you get another one and put them one on top of the other. And then you could see how I am going to sew uh, one little loop on the top and then one loop on the bottom and one loop on the top and one loop on the bottom. And I'm basically going to sew four or five of these little loops. You have one yo-yo on the top and one on the bottom and then I'm sewing through them and this is how I'm going to connect them. I don't sew them completely because you do want space between your yo-yos. So I'm only going to do 
like four maybe five stitches and then you see how that's it and then just put it back in and uh, leave a loop where you're going to go through and uh, make a knot and that's going to secure um, your um, sewing and then that's it they're connected just keep going keep connecting them any way you want to create any shape you want now that you know how to make your circle yo-yos you're an expert you're ready to move on to the bonus section where i told you i would show you how to do these yo-yos that look a bit different more of a honeycomb shape with their uh, six side a lot more interesting they don't have the little holes but you can add them later and you see how they connect really cool all right so again a drawstring cast on just like before this time i'm going to go in the other direction just to make things interesting and show you that it really doesn't matter you can manage either direction in and out in and out in and out every other peg go behind peg one and then take the working yarn and lay it loosely over the next few pegs and take the bottom loop over the top and you're going to knit off all of those pegs that have two loops you guys know how to do this drawstring cast on that's why i'm going a bit quicker just want to show you what's different on this um yo-yo it's not really that much we're just gonna add now a purl stitch all right just like before on row one peg one there's no loop right so we're gonna slip that one here and then knit three then you're gonna purl one knit three 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 okay that's purl one knit three till the end so you slipped one well i slipped one now i'm going to knit those three stitches and then start that pattern of the purl one so i take my working yarn and put it under the existing loop from the top i'm going to scoop up to create a new loop take the loop that's on the peg off and then i'm going to put that new loop back onto the peg and i'm going to pull the drawstring to tighten it that's a purl once you do your purl your one purl then you're going to do three knit stitches and then again you're going to do a purl because you're going to do one purl three knits until the end of the row that's the pattern on this one so this was we're doing now row one okay so you continue to do purl one knit three until the end of the row now you can see that peg one has a loop on it right and so since it now has a peg row two through ten are going to change in that now you're going to do a purl one and knit three until the end of the row right remember that on row one only row one only peg one you slipped it because row uh, peg one did not have a stitch but now um a loop but now it does and so row two is super easy purl one knit three until the end of the row once you have those ten uh, stitches I'm sorry once you have your 10 rows then you're ready for your drawstring so here I am doing your old version of going around the loom one and a bit over and then with the hook from the top scooping up to feed the working yarn through each loop and as you can see I don't take the loops off the peg right I'm just taking that working yarn and scooping it up and feeding it through each loop and this takes more yarn so this is why um, I don't like to do it this way anymore you can if you like and so I wanted to show you a different option once you're done then you can take all the loops off the peg like before you're stretching those stitches so the top and bottom you pull them and that's how you stretch them when you're done take the drawstring cast on and pull on it until you close uh, the little hole now here I closed it completely to show you this option if you wanted it 
you can close the little hole completely on the other one as well but then it doesn't look like uh, the original yo-yos and that's why I didn't want to do it and just like before you feed it through uh, the, to the sides so that you could use your sides to uh, sew your yo-yos together so here again I'm also going to go ahead and uh, take the working yarn and sew it through uh, the loops from the cast on and the cast off well, it's that easy to create two different versions of this super fun yo-yo project. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you'll share the video because that helps me a lot. And let me know other ideas that you would like to see me work on in the comment section. And check out some of the videos I've already done. YouTube is gonna show you some options they think you'll be interested in and until next time, I hope you'll come back and loom with me again. Bye, guys.